everybody, this is Jason with Colorado Mountain Man Survival. We're out at camp today, and I'm going to show you some tips on using the, the bow drill to get yourself a friction fire. Uh, there's a few different components. Stay with us, and I'll show you what those components are. So in this video, I'm not actually showing you a bow drill. You, know, you can see those bow drills all over. You can watch thousand and one people cranking on that thing to show you how to, to get this uh, coal. I'm going to show you some tips to make it so when you go home or out in camp or whatever and try to make your own bow drill, things will help you be successful if you've been having a hard time. Uh, so here's my kit down here. Uh, this is a kit that I've used for a while. You know, um, go over the components here. First of all, this is the, the actual bow for the fire or for the bow drill. Um, this one I've used for a couple years. As you can see, I am using paracord on this bow. You can use natural cordage, but you would have to change your bow a little bit different. But we're not going to talk about that now. We're going to talk about this particular kit. Um, so here's my bow. Uh, this piece right here, this is the spindle. As you can see, again, it's been used. So I will talk about all these in detail here in a moment. This is the hearth board or the fire board, depending on what you want to call it. Uh, this is the bearing block. This is up here. That's your bearing block. That's the part you hold in your hand. And then right here, this is the ember pan. Um, this can be anything. I've, you know, I'm using a wood chip for this one, but again, uh, we'll talk about that all in a moment. So stick with me still, and I'll show you some tips for each of these, these components to help you improve your, your friction fire skills. Okay, so the first piece of this drill kit that we're going to talk about is the bow. It's probably the simplest one to talk about. Um, as you can see here, uh, it's got a slight curve. You don't necessarily have to have a curve, but a little curve is helpful. Uh, some people like to have this more bowed, but this is how I like to do it. Uh, before I get going too far, I should say that there are lots of ways to make a bow drill. Uh, there's no real wrong way. Well, there's wrong ways, but there's multiple right ways. Anybody else that has a different way, they're not wrong. This is just the way they do it. I'm going to show you how I do it. So here's my bow. A little bit of a curve. Uh, length, as you can see, I've got armpit to just short of my fingers there. Um, some people like them longer, whatever. This is the length that I like. Uh, but it's really important that you have, you, you're comfortable with that length. It's not too big around. This is a dry piece of wood. It's not heavy. You don't want these really heavy. Otherwise, it's going to dip down and smack into the ground. You do want this kind of stout, though. You can see I've got a little bend on it. I get a lot of students that go out there and grab a piece of wood, and they come back, and they're pulling on, and they're like, well, how's that? Does that look good? Is it fine? And first thing I do is I grab that bow drill from them, and I put it on my knee and give it a flex test. I would say everybody's first bow drill, when they come back and hand it to me, I do this, and it breaks it in half. You want these to be kind of stout because we're going to put some pressure on it. I'm not pulling really hard on this. I'm probably putting, I don't know, 20 pounds of pressure on that, pulling it back. So it's got to be kind of stout. Um, big enough to be around to be comfortable in your hand. You don't want to be holding a big giant thing. So this is comfortable in my hand. When I'm bowing with this, I'm usually holding on to the thicker end, the thinner end. Is out on the end because I want the weight here. If there's a lot of weight out on this end, this is going to dip down, smack in the ground. I don't want that. All right, so carving the bow drill, or sorry, carving the bow, what I do on this side, the top side of the bow, is you can see this notch right here. I just use a, my knife or a saw and just carve down into that a little bit. Now, get up close there so you can kind of check it out. I've got a jam knot. This is a jam knot right here tied on there. Uh, here in a little bit, I can show you how to do the jam knot. It's a pretty simple knot. But what I do on this end of the stick is I carve a notch in this direction. It's opposite on the very end. That way, the string, when I tie this off, it starts down here on the side, as you can see here. And then it comes up, up over the top. Now you see I've used this stick for a couple of years, so it is split here. I'm going to fix this. In my next video, I'll probably show you how I can fix this stick. But what I'm going to do is if this wasn't broken, I would just slide this paracord through that notch. But I'm going to 
have to work on it because that split. So you can see what I'm going to do here. But I'm going to pop that knot through. Now normally that knot is going to fit on this top end. Pause here so you can get a good look. But what I do when I'm my, brand, my bow drill is brand new, I'm going to leave a little bit of flex here. This, uh, this is or, uh, a little play, whatever you want to call it. It's not tight. You can see that's not tight. This, this thick or this tightness, how loose it is, all depends on the size of your spindle. The way I've got it right here right now is perfect for my spindle. When you first start using this bow drill, um, your cordage is going to, to uh, stretch. Paracord stretches. So I've got this knot right here to start. Uh, if this were brand new cordage, it would eventually stretch. So what I would do is I would take this apart, pull this out, and I would tie another knot right next to it, and that would take out the slack. But right here, this is where we're sitting on this bow drill. Typically, this would sit up at the end. But to finish this off, to finish this knot, all I'm going to do is a clove hitch here on the end. Here, I'll go in slow motion here really slow no just mm -hmm. kidding so i'm going to wrap this around wrap around twice you see i've got an x pattern there see that x this end of the cordage goes underneath that x i'm just going to pull that through and now that's tight so now i've got my bow drill i've got some excess i can tie this around just get rid of it um, but here's my bow drill like I said, it's broken here, so I'm going to fix this here in a moment when I'm done here. But you, now you got an idea. I got the cut here this way, and then I got this cut here this way. So that's my bow drill. That's the first thing you need to know uh, to get your fire kit started. Okay, the next piece of the kit, very simple piece, is going to be the bearing block. Um, bearing block, really not much to it. Uh, for me, you just need to find something that's comfortable in your hand. That's it. Uh, well, and you want to you want dense wood. The denser the wood, the better. Typically, if you can find wood that's denser than your spindle, you're doing great. I find up here at our location, uh, we've got pine and aspen to work with. For here, I usually go find um, fresh green aspen that allows this spindle to spin in here better without uh, burning this up too fast. So you're just going to take your knife. Um, this is the U side. I'm going to use this back side. Just take your knife and spin in, drill in a little hole here, and that's it. Now that spindle, when I get it made, will fit in that notch. And I'm just gonna hold this in my hand, and I'm gonna push down, and that's going to be my bearing block. All right, the next piece of this kit we're gonna talk about is the, is the spindle. Um, this is where you're gonna get some of your heat from. As you can see, uh, this is, the burned in spot down here. Uh, imagine if you will, this is an upside down pencil. This is our eraser end, it's kind of rounded, and this is our pencil end, it comes to a point. Uh, when I first get starting started on this, I wanna shave this down more, more of a point with a long taper. The longer your point, the bigger your taper is, um, the less friction you're gonna have when your bearing block sits up on top of there. All right, so this is this is your your top end. Ninety percent of my students, when they first start out, they want to do this because they're so used to using a pencil. When the end goes up, you're erasing. You're not writing, so the eraser end goes down. The the blunt end. This is where all your heat's going to be. Uh, when you're carving this out, you want it to be as close to this round as possible. Now, when you do start using it, that's going to round out on its own. We're going to step back here a minute and start out with the basic fundamentals of the spindle. First off, your spindle needs to be completely dry, completely seasoned. You don't want to use wet wood. You want to use the driest wood you possibly can. That's where you're going to get your most success. success. Um, this spindle is made out of pine. All right, for length of the spindle, uh, I don't have huge hands. I got small girly hands. Uh, you can see the length that I'm using. Again, if you've watched any of my other videos, hang 10, surfer dude, 10 and four. Some people do 10 and two. I like to start out longer, 10 and four, and then the, as time goes on, this shrinks down. 
If you have small hands, then you are going to probably do two fingers together. You know, women with smaller hands or little kids, you're going to do a longer spindle because otherwise you're going to have a little tiny spindle like that and it's just not going to work for you. So start out with a longer spindle. Uh, the, the width of this, or I guess the, the circumference, as you can see, this one is about the size of my thumb, a little bit narrower. You can go thicker, a little bit thicker. You can go a little bit thinner, and it's going to be fine. But if you use your thumb as a base, you're, you're off to a good start. Uh, next thing, let's see. Um, if you don't know what kind of wood you're using, you're going to do a thumbnail test. You see, I'm going to push my thumbnail into it, and you probably can't see it on the camera, but I'm leaving a little mark with my thumbnail. It's just a little indentation. If I can leave a mark with, that, with my thumbnail without it hurting really, really bad, then the wood is a good density. If it just squishes in there really easy, either the wood is too rotten or it's going to be way too soft. But um, do your thumbnail check if you don't know your wood type. If you do have cracks in your wood, you see the cracks in here, no big deal. It's not going to hurt you at all. Let's see. Um, next thing, probably the most important thing of this, is this spindle needs to be straight. As straight as you possibly can get it. I know it's hard to find straight wood out in the, uh, out in the forest, but if you get something with a little jog in it, this is going to wobble on you, and you're going to not get a coal. Uh, last thing, I guess... When we carve things with our knives, you know, it's our habit to want to touch stuff, to feel it. We just uh, like to use all of our senses. If you touch this end, you're going to get your oils from your hands on here. And that could potentially screw you up. Uh, this end you can touch as much as you want. It don't matter. You can lick it. You can rub it on your greasy face or on your forehead. You can get your earwax out. It don't matter. That's all lubrication. You can lubricate this end as much as you want. This end, you want the friction, you want no oils. If you do happen to touch it, just take your knife and rough it up. Scrape any of the gunk that you might have gotten off on there from your nasty hands. Sorry, from your hands, and then you'll be fine. So that's your spindle. Very important piece. Everything's important, but you, this one you do have to pay careful attention to. You want it straight, figure it, you know, figure out as your thumb, and you have to whittle it like an upside down pencil, curved on this end, pointing on that end, length 10 and 4. Okay, our next piece for the fire kit, for the bow drill kit, is the hearth board or the fire board. Um, you can see the thickness here, I'm probably about a half inch, maybe a little bit more. Like the spindle, this piece of wood has to be well seasoned, completely dry. You don't want to use wet wood. Um, this is also a piece of pine, so I've got pine on pine. You can use pine on aspen, or you can use different types of wood. Just uh, remember that density te test that I talked about with the spindle. Uh, there's a, there are better woods. Uh, Cedar is one of the best woods to use. Uh, yucca, but out here we don't have a very big option. I use what we have out here, and um, pine and aspen are what we use. Up here I find that aspen glasses over when you use it, so I don't use it. Okay, so my hearth board. As you can see, I've used it a few times. Uh, this is my latest hole. Uh, the first time we used it, got it too close to the edge. Uh, this one worked for a while, but eventually it popped through too wide, and then these two worked fine, but uh, it broke off after a time. But what I'm going to do, if this is a brand new board, I want to start a hole right here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take my spindle that I already made and I'm going to set it back from the edge. I don't want it right out here. I want to use it back here somewhere. Um, you can get a little bit closer, but I find that if you go too close to the edge and then you start drilling at an angle, it's going to pop free like it did this. So I, I like to set mine back. That's probably uh, maybe a quarter inch or more back, but as you can see, with it sitting in there, how far away I am from the edge. But what I'm going to do is obviously you're not going to find a piece of wood that's got a nice little burn hole. So I'm going to I'm going to set this down here so you can see what I'm doing. So I want to do a new spindle hole right here. I'm going to gauge where I'm going to run this spindle down. 
take my knife and I'm going to gouge out a little hole just I broke it there but that's all right I just want to make a little hole big enough for this spindle to sit in that way when it spins it's not sliding back and forth up the, the board so now that's going to spin in there nicely it's going to burn a hole what I do before first off is I'm going to get my bow drill on here I'm going to spin this and let it burn down into this just enough to make a little divot um, and then I'm going to stop and I'm going to carve this notch now you can see this is kind of a pie piece this notch here so I would carve this this notch over here in this new hole I'm going to use this one as an example it's just a pie piece that's maybe an eighth of a piece of pie there out of this hole do you see I didn't go all the way to the center of the hole I'm just set back a little bit from the center and this is you know like I said an eighth of a pie piece now when I start drilling on this if I get a lot of smoke or sorry a lot of ash dust built up on the outside then this gap that means this gap is not big enough I need to go maybe a saw length width or a knife width thicker uh, anything out here is wasted energy also before I get going I like to flip this over and right here right in this spot right here I've kind of hollowed this out a little bit with my knife I'll just scoop this out just a little bit that cause it makes like a, a little concave hole that allows dust to build up underneath your fireboard along with all the dust that's in here it, it just gives you a little bit more of an advantage to get your coal going so there's your your hearth board your fireboard um, this does not have to be this thick it just needs to be thick enough so you'll have a little bit of space on each side of your spindle that's about it for your fireboard um, right, lengthwise you do you're going to put your foot on this so I'm going to show you I'll put it on the ground here I'm going to put my foot on it so I need to have enough room on my foot so I can still put my spindle right here and still have my foot on there to brace it so if I only intended to use this once then I can use a shorter hearth board Okay, so the very last piece for our bow drill kit is our ember pan. Now, I'm just using a wood chip. This is just a wood chip. You can uh, use a leaf. Uh, usually a broad leaf works good, a dry leaf. You can use a piece of leather. You can use a piece of wood chip, whatever. But I find that the thinner this piece of wood is, the better it works for me. You can use a big, another big, thick piece of wood that sticks underneath there. But I find a, if you use a big piece of wood, these vibrate on top of each other, and that uh, causes your your dust pile to break apart. And you want that to stay stay thick. So this is the ember pan. This goes underneath this piece of wood. When you make your coal, your coal falls on top of this ember pan. Some people, you know, don't talk about that in your video, and I, I see people just making this, trying to make their coal directly on the ground, and then they get their coal, and they're like, now what? Well, this is your catch. This is what catches that coal. So you can transfer your coal into a fire, uh, a fire bundle or your tinder bundle. Nothing fancy about it, but a very important piece to your bow drill kit. Okay, so I'm going to put my spindle in the bow drill. There is a right way and a wrong way to do this. What you need to do is have your spindle so it's on the outside of the rope. I'll show you the right way first. So I'm just going to flip it around, turn it. It should be kind of tight. So you can see there, the spindle is on the outside of the rope. It's out here. Sorry, that's hard to hold. It's out here. It's not inside here. So you want that spindle out there. That way it will track all the way up and down this without hitting this piece of wood. Now let me show you the wrong way real quick. So you can see it. That is the wrong way. You see it's on the inside of that rope. It's gonna cause that to hit there. You're gonna rub up against that and it's gonna cause some friction, loss of energy. The most energy you can serve on doing this bow drill, the better, the more successful you're gonna be. 
So now I'm going to set this up in the fireboard and in this, you know, get to uh, show you the mechanics of this bow drill. Typically, you want to get in a comfortable position. We're going to put the spindle with the pointy side up, the flat side or the, the, the blunt side down. I've got my ember pan underneath, that's to catch the coals. And then here's my hearth board. I'm going to go ahead and try to see if I can get a coal today. See how well I do. Now, you're just going to go like 10 miles per hour. You're going to go slow on this. Just take your time. You're building up that coal, that ember, sorry, the coal inside of here. You don't want to kill yourself to begin with. And we're just going to saw until that fills up. If you don't see smoke in 10 to 15 seconds, then there's something wrong with your fireboard and you need to just stop because you're just, you're not doing anything. You're wasting energy. You can see a little bit of smoke rolling out of there, but I'm going to keep going on this. You can see I'm not going too terribly fast, but I'm staying constant and I'm going to do this for about 30, 45 seconds. That allows that hole to fill up with dust. As you can see, I'm getting some buildup on the outside. That means I should widen my hole a little bit. Now, in the last 15, 10, 15 seconds, I'm gonna speed up and see if I can't get that to be right. Oh, my, my board broke on me. No coal, that broke, just an old piece of wood. So not successful there, that happens sometimes. But uh, today our, our video wasn't about getting a coal. It's just showing the, some of the fundamentals of your kit so you can see what was going on. Um, if you have any questions, uh, comment below. I answer any questions I can. Uh, if you're having difficulties with this, Go join a class and have them teach you how to do this. This is one of the harder parts of, of survival. But if you get this figured out, you're set. Getting a fire boosts your ego. It makes everything better. Makes survival way easier. Uh, hope you like the video. Hope you learned something today. Uh, if you like it, please share, subscribe, let your friends know. And uh, thanks for watching.